when you find out that your life will forever change, you're now deaf blind. In my case, I didn't accept it. And it became very scary where I'd be able to live beyond my death line. Come and find out. It's said one of every three visually impaired individuals will be hit by a car. I've been hit by a car three times. My name is Calvin Crosby, the inventor of the C E cane. The first fully lighted white cane for those visually impaired to help them from being hit by a car. Join me to help me live and 253 million visually impaired people beyond this challenge. This See Me Kane YouTube channel is for not only me to share my journey and how I built the See Me Kane and my journey of living with deaf blindness, but it's for you. It's for you to learn about my story and how I built this company, but as well take action to change those with visual impairment lives by liking, sharing, subscribing, and even commenting on this video. So that way, every comment, every like, every subscription can monetize this YouTube channel. So that way, all the proceeds from the monetization goes to the fund to help those with visual impairment get a cane for free. So when you like, subscribe or comment on on any of my YouTube videos you are truly saying yes I want to help somebody with a visual impairment get a see me cane so they can travel more safely and more independent so hit that subscribe and like button it's time for a see me cane story of the day hey 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 so we're talking about when I turned 19 years old, think about it. When you're 19, the whole world before you, you don't think anybody, anything can really go wrong with in your life at that point. Well, in my case, when I was 19, my night vision had deteriorated so bad, I couldn't see at all at night. And at this point, I was working at a campground and I was working a early morning shift and toward the end of the summer, I'm walking to go to work. And since there's janitorial stuff, there's maintenance stuff, lawn mowing stuff, over on one of the side roads was one of the big lawnmowers, like tractor lawnmowers with the blades that are really high up. Like they kind of, when they're up, they're in a safety mode, but in a V. And at this point, my vision had gotten so bad that I didn't see the lawnmower. And the next thing you know, I'm hitting it right where the V is from the blade and where you would step onto the tractor. And I fell right into the middle, cutting up my shirt, cutting my knees up, and going, just realizing I could not see the lawnmower. I mean, I'm supposed to see that, right? When you can see, you're supposed to see those things. But I couldn't. And I realized my night vision at this point had deteriorated so bad that I couldn't necessarily do this. See, I, I did go back, I did go to work all scraped up. My boss was not happy though. And he's like, you're not gonna work the early morning shifts anymore, which I was bummed about. Cause I love having my afternoons to myself. But he said, I'm gonna make an accommodation for you to come during working hours that are in the day. And so that way you can don't have to worry about traveling at night or early morning. And that's what he did. But did I accept that? No. I didn't accept the fact that I was losing my night vision to the point where I couldn't see in low light situations at all. See, it wasn't until reality hit one day in November of 2006 I would go to school and you know in the cafeteria they got like tables all right around and you take your tray to the dish station and drop it off and I was walking with the tray 
And somebody left their chair out, and I didn't see it. I hit that chair full speed and went to my knees. And at this point, I had to make a decision. Do I embrace death blindness or not? My words said that I would embrace death blindness. But my action did not. And over the next six months of my life. I would get so angry. With running into poles. Running into cars. Running into different things. That were just sitting there. Or just always there. But never saw it. And I tried to take my life away. 12 times in this season. Because I didn't want to live with a hearing loss and a vision loss causing me to be deaf blind. And it wasn't until the 12th time a still soft voice said, Calvin, I have a plan for you. I have a plan that you are going to do something big. That's going to save so many lives. And we're here in 2024. That plan is being fulfilled. The Simi Kings are here. I decided to live my life to the fullest as a deaf blind individual but you got to stay tuned to tomorrow to see how did I heal with my struggles with deaf blindness because I tell you it's fascinating because it, you it's not something that you would normally think about but come and check out tomorrow's video and see how I start healing through my deaf blindness